So let's spend a minute, Ethan, talking about one other thing, kind of bringing it all the way back full circle in the atherosclerosis world. Um, I generally tell my patients that there are four big pillars of risk in ASCVD. Uh, smoking, hypertension, ApoB, and metabolic health. And that last one is kind of squirrely because, you know, I can't point to one number that tells me, like I can point to your ApoB, I can point to your blood pressure, you're either smoking or you're not smoking. Um, but here I talk about the sources of fat that exist outside of your subcutaneous, uh, you know, uh, depots of fat. And I typically talk about five of them, but I, I know you tend to focus on a couple, so I want to double click on those. But just for folks listening, right? I think the generally accepted principle of this is we as a species, um, one of our remarkable advantages in evolution was our ability to store energy. Uh, you know, without this capacity, we wouldn't exist. And so we have this vast network of subcutaneous adipose tissue, white adipose tissue, that is incredibly adept at storing triacylglycerides. And I think what appears very clear is that different people have a different genetic capacity for how much they can store. So I kind of liken this to a bathtub. Everybody has a different <laughs> size bathtub. Um, and you, the water coming in the bathtub is how much you're eating and the water leaving through the drain is how much energy you're expending. And if you're accumulating fat, you are, you know, obviously uh, consuming more than you're expending. But at some point you could fill that bathtub up and water can escape the bathtub. And that's when really bad stuff happens, right? That's when it gets into, you know, the floorboards, the electrical stuff, and that's a disaster. And you don't need to get a lot of water out of the tub for really bad things to happen, right? Ask anybody who's gone through a leaking, uh, a leak in their house. So you can, you might have a hundred gallons in the bathtub. If two gallons escape in the wrong place, it can be a disaster. And so talk about the places where it escapes. So around the viscera, uh, within the muscle itself, in the pancreas specifically, which we can talk about maybe why that's so problematic, pericardial fat. Tell us Literally. a little bit about why this is so problematic. Well, first of all, I'm so incredibly impressed at how you tell that story because it's exactly how we tell the story. And, and we learned it from Steve O'Reilly, who I think is the sort of godfather of this concept. Uh, I think we've all appreciated for some time that there's a relationship in terms of risk and weight, that that's imperfect and BMI, right? That their BMI is not a great measure of risk. It is in epidemiology, it is in large populations. Right. We also know that how much fat you carry, so overall adiposity is important. But what we've learned really in the past 20 years is that, to, as you've said, that it's not so much even how much fat you have, it's where you carry it, and that, that we are evolutionarily programmed to store energy in these places around our hips and our butt and our legs, and not as much up here in our bellies, and definitely not in our organs, right? That that's a bad thing. Uh, and that has been shown to be a very potent predictor of risk, uh, and that there are a number of genetic alleles that predispose to both these differences in body composition, but also to differences in risk of developing diseases like coronary disease and, and diabetes. So super fascinating area that I'm gonna devote the rest of my life to understanding and trying to, to fix. Uh, the question you ask, which is why is it that if you overwhelm the bathtub and leaks out and gets into the floorboards, why is that rot? Why is that rot? Why is that so bad? The answer is not one I can give you, but I we started our sort of process in thinking about this problem and thinking about extreme the extremes of biology, in particular, these rare genetic diseases that are called lipodystrophies, where people are born with the inability to store fat at all in generalized lipodystrophy or with just an isolated inability to store fat in the gluteofemoral and subcutaneous regions in the legs. So they, they have a selective loss of adipose tissue in their, in their butt and their legs, and therefore a huge overabundance of fat in the abdomen and the viscera in the liver and the pancreas and the heart, as we talked about. Um, and those people have tremendous metabolic disease and extraordinary levels of risk, right? I mean, there's small numbers of people, they're rare diseases, and all of these studies are observational, but there's uh, there's a you know beautiful paper from from 
Canada from 20 years ago showing that people born with these sort of congenital uh, forms of severe insulin resistance, be it either lipodystrophy or type A insulin resistance, have astronomical coronary artery disease risk. They're women who are having bypass operations in their 30s and 40s, which is basically unheard of and, uh, uh, you know, in women. So uh, I think the question of why that is remains unanswered. I think there are lots of different potential hypotheses. Um, you know, I think the role of insulin and, you know, its impact on different organs and tissues and cells is, is interesting. Thank you.